Okay. <clears throat> and continuing with the whole genealogy um, scenario, uh, I stated in my previous video, avoiding genealogies, that the only genealogy that really we need to be concerned about is the genealogy that points to the Messiah. Okay. And you can you can uh, learn about these genealogies in the book in the Gospel of Matthew, and in the Gospel of Luke. Now the difference between the Gospel of Matthew, the genealogy given in there, and the genealogy given in the Gospel of Luke, number one is in Matthew it points from Abraham, only Abraham. And then it points forward. In the Gospel of Luke, you will notice that it points from Eli backwards. There's also a nice little in interesting twist in Luke's genealogy, which I will get into that in a minute. It's, it's basically based on a matter of reading the text very carefully to really see what's going on here. Okay, especially when we get down to the end of the genealogy in Matthew, you're going to see that Joseph is the son of, you know, so and so. And then in Luke, it kind of seems like it contradicts Matthew's genealogy, but it really doesn't because he, it says that, you know, Jesus began to be about 30 years old and was supposed and was the supposed son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. We're going to get into that and kind of go and kind of explain that. And we're going to see that the genealogy mentioned in Luke is, is actually the one that really determines Jesus as the Messiah. Because again, Matthew just starts with Abraham. The one difference is, is Luke's starts and goes backward all the way to... Adam. So, <clears throat> I know you got these people, which is true. The scripture does say the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. Well, Shiloh came, you know, and he became the lawgiver, okay, basically. And, and I know the prophecies of, you know, he's going to come from the tribe of Judah. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I, I understand that. But you have these people that say, oh, Jesus was a Jew. This came from a specific bloodline. I... But you really have to ask yourself, if Jesus Christ has his lineage date, dated prior to Abraham, all the way to Adam in the Garden of Eden, before Adam's fall, mind you, Adam, there's no evidence that Adam was flesh bone and blood there's only evidence that you know when he's when Adam said to Eve this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh there, there's no mention of blood prior to the fall okay um yet the genealogy in Luke goes all the way back to Adam And so you have to ask yourself, really, you know, when, when people say, well, Jesus was a Jew. Yes, I understand that. He was a Jew because his mother was Jewish. Okay, he came from the line of Judah. I get that. But to sit there and say that he is 100% Jewish, does that mean you're putting a race, racial, ethnic on God? Because after all, God is not Jewish. God is God, <laughs> you know, you know, God made the nations, all the nations of one blood, and, and <clears throat> the point of the children of Israel in the Old Testament, and the reason of them being in that land was to be a light unto the Gentiles, and that was fulfilled through the apostles, the disciples, and Jesus Himself. So yes, the Jews fulfilled these prophecies even though they had no understanding of them because they rejected Jesus. But to sit there and say 
Oh, Jesus was a Jew. Uh, yes. Half. <laughs> you know, he was part man, but he was all God. And God, in and of itself, is not Jewish. <laughs> so, and if Jesus Christ is, as Isaiah um, points out, that, you know, he is the everlasting Father, he is the Prince of Peace, the Almighty God, and these types of things. A wonderful counselor. So are we to just uh, limit Jesus Christ to just being Jewish? Or using the term Jewish Messiah? He wasn't the Jewish Messiah. He was the Messiah to the whole world. Okay. Granted, yes. He came through the tribe of Judah. I understand that. But to sit there and say that, you know, he came from a specific bloodline when his genealogy in Luke stems prior to where even the word blood was mentioned in the time of Adam, before the fall. Then how can, how can you say he just came from a specific bloodline? That would basically put him in an origin, which would put him in the aspect that he was a created being. So really, you really got to watch yourself when you say that he was a Jew. And just stick with he was a Jew only. You have to understand who Jesus was. So let's go ahead and read these genealogies. Um, starting in Matthew 1. 1. <clears throat> the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now notice it starts from Abraham and goes forward. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judah, or Judas, and his brethren. And Judas begat Perez, and Zerah, and Tamar. And Perez begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesus begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, and Solomon begat Reboam, and Reboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, Josephat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Selathiel, Selathiel begat Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadak, and Sadak begat Akim, and Akim begat Eliud, Eliud begat Eliezer, Eliezer begat Matan, Matan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Multiples of 7. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away unto Babylon, into Babylon unto Christ, are 14 generations. So here we see... Here we see the lineage... Basically, the lineage of Joseph, okay, the husband of Mary, all right, and Joseph's father was Jacob, you know, a guy named Jacob. Basically, this is not Marion's line. This is not Mary's line. This line is specifically for Joseph. Now, obviously, Jesus has no lineage with Joseph. Why? Well, you got to look at the you got to look at the virgin birth. Mary was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Only really conceived by Joseph, it wasn't conceived by any man. Jesus says a body was prepared for me. Okay. And these types of things. Jesus was spoken in the womb that he, that, that Mary was to bring forth a son call his name Jesus and these types of things however at the same time Jesus was already preeminence over all things he, he always existed he always was he's God manifested in the flesh so we can't really use this line to to basically prove Jesus's lineage here 
because this is just a lineage dating from Abraham to Joseph and it stops however it's very interesting in Luke and in Luke 3.23 this is where it, you might run into some confusion it says in Luke 3.23 and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed the son of Joseph which was the son of Heli now we all know that in Matthew 1 Joseph was the son of Jacob so how can this be well <clears throat> before I read this uh, note here this notation I'm gonna basically kinda explain it the best I can see the thing is is you have mother-in-laws and father-in-laws right okay so basically when Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed the son of Joseph Jesus which was the son of Heli you get what I'm saying? So basically, Joseph married Eli's daughter, Mary. Mary was the daughter of Eli, so therefore Joseph was Eli's son-in-law. So that's why when you see that, you know, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, that is why that is put in there. So really, this is not Joseph's lineage. This is Mary's lineage, dating start, starting from basically from Jesus himself, going all the way back. And hence, this, is, this comment basically says the same thing. Which was the son of Eli, meaning not that Joseph was the son of Eli, for he was the son of Jacob, according to Matthew 1.16. But Jesus was the son of Eli, and which must be understood and carry through the whole genealogy. Why? Because you're going to see at the very end of this genealogy. As us, Jesus the son of Matat, Jesus the son of Levi, Jesus the son of Melchi, etc. Till you come to Jesus the son of Adam and Jesus the son of God. Though it is true indeed that Joseph was the son of Eli, having married his daughter. So, he, 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 Joseph was Eli's son-in-law. Mary was the daughter of Eli, and so the Jews speak of one Mary, the daughter of Eli, by whom they seem to design the mother of our Lord, for they tell us of one. That saw Mary, the daughter of Eli, in the shades, hanging by the fibers of her breast, that there are that say the gate, or as elsewhere, the bar of the gate of hell is fixed to her ear. I know that's kind of, that, that, that's, that's very, that, that's pro that's probably taken from the Talmud, but needless to say, you know, I know that it's kind of hard not to get righteous and indignant over things like that because they say that Mary was a whore and these types of things. But also, when you look at the historical record, this is the only thing that really matters to me right there, Mary, the daughter of Eli. Okay? That's the only thing that matters right there. Which will basically prove why they used the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. Okay? So, again, because Joseph was Eli's son-in-law through marriage. So this is basically the maternal lineage from Mary, starting with Jesus, go dating all the, all the way back. And so let's go ahead and read it. Jesus, which was the son of Metet, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Metatias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nagi, which was the son of Math, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Semei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Resa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Selethia, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosem, which was the son of Elmodam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Jos. Josie, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Jorim, which was the son of Matat, which was the son of Levi. Or Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Menan, which was the son of Matatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, hey, that's my name, which, <laughs> which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nathan. Which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Pharez, which was the son of Judah. 
which was a son of Jacob, which was a son of Isaac, which was a son of Abraham. Now, should I stop there? Nope, it keeps going. Which was a son of Terah, which was a son of Nacor, which was a son of Saruk, which was a son of Regal, which was a son of Phalek, which was a son of Heber, which was a son of Salah, which was a son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noah. So here we're going way before Abraham was brought into picture, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Meleliel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of of God. So again, these things are from everlasting. There is no beginning with Jesus because Jesus always was, he is eternal. Okay? The prophecies of a Messiah started right from the Garden of Eden. And so, therefore, when you see phrases in Genesis 13 and Genesis 15 and 17, when it talks about, and he will, and um, he will establish his covenant with, with thee, speaking to singular Abraham, and it shall be an everlasting covenant, and it talks about a seed. It can be no. It can mean no other. It could mean no other. Than the everlasting seed line of faith. Dating from creation. All the way up into the time of the Messiah. Which means. That the flesh. The circumcision. You know and these types of things. This isn't boasting. Okay did not even come into existence until after Abraham. Jesus' lineage dates prior to all the way up to the beginning where there was no blood. Because Adam wasn't flesh and blood at the beginning of his creation. It never says it. This is my, now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This was before his fall. It's no wonder why Jesus is called the second Adam. Now, some may make the claim or assume that, you know, that, that, that there is a controversy with Mary because, you know, there's a lot of people say that Eli had no, had only daughters, you know, and so therefore couldn't, ha couldn't have been, you know, Jesus couldn't have been the Messiah because, you know, Mary only has sisters to have no brothers to carry on a line there's a loophole there and you'll find it in numbers in numbers 26 33 okay we're gonna read a little story of Zelophehad and Zelophehad the son of Hefer had no sons but daughters the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah Hagla Milka and Terza we carry this in uh, numbers 27 1 then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Merkur, the son of Manasseh, the, and uh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, and Melka, and Tursa. And they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness. And he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he hath no son? Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, 
then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. There's a loophole. And I and so that basically solves the little riddle, if you will, of Mary only having sisters. Because if that was the case, then guess what? The inheritance passes unto Eli's daughters. And inheritance is everlasting inheritance. Those who become grafted into Christ are the children of promise. Henceforth, that explains why God must have threw that little twist in there. Especially with the accusations of Mary only had sisters. Let's see, people, and, and a lot of this is really overlooked, you know, because you have people that will just uh, say New Testament or whatever and these types of things, and they just totally overlook this. And, 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 and when this issue comes up, because a lot of rabbis will actually point this out, like, oh, wait, 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 but Mary didn't have any sons, or, or Mary didn't have any brothers, so therefore Jesus can't be the Messiah. <laughs> you can point them to... Their Torah, which they claim they use, which they claim is the truth, even though they hold the Talmud above, you can point them to Numbers 26 and Numbers 27. And it explains it away right there. So, yes, Jesus did come from the line of Judah. That's very, very true. But he was not 100% Jew. Otherwise, he would be 100% man. And was he 100% man? Before Abraham was, I am. Hmm. He was God, manifest in the flesh. God was not a Jew. <laughs> okay. God always existed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He came unto his own, his own received him not. So I hope this clears up the genealogy of Jesus and clears up any confusion of that. Any aspect that, yes, Jesus was a Jew, that's understandable. But to sit there and say he claimed he came from a specific bloodline. Well, if he was the son of Adam, and if, you know, and, and which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God, that means he must have came before Adam. And before the fall, there was no flesh and blood. Duh. Only flesh and bone. And again, this lineage goes prior to Abraham. Even prior to Noah. So, yeah, he may have had Jewish blood in him. But he also had Adamic blood in him from Adam. And you can't prove to me that Adam was a Jew. So to sit there and say Jesus is 100% blue because of a bloodline stock is irrelevant and it's wrong. Because you can't say that. Mainly because of the genealogy in Luke. So I figured I, you know, I, I would come on and explain this the best I can. And if, if, if you're too illiterate to understand that this is not boasting, this is just presenting truth, then I don't know what else to say to you. You need to go and learn your grammar. That's, I mean, that's all it is. So, we're going to continue in some more scriptural studies. I want to cover Romans 10 and Romans 11. And, but next I want to do a real, real quick synopsis of the whole aspect of replacement theology. Is replacement theology accurate? Is it right? Is it true? Or, you have to ask yourself the, this question. How can you replace something that always was? Till next time, truth be told, truth be known, stay safe, God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <coughs> I know you got these people, which is true. The scripture does say the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. Well, Shiloh came. 
you know, and he became the lawgiver, okay, basically. And and I know the prophecies of, you know, he's going to come from the tribe of Judah. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. I, I understand that. But you have these people that say, oh, Jesus was a Jew. This came from a specific bloodline. I, but you really have to ask yourself, if Jesus Christ has his lineage date, dated prior to Abraham, all the way to Adam in the Garden of Eden, before Adam's fall, mind you, Adam, there's no evidence that Adam was flesh, bone, and blood. There's only evidence that, you know, when he, when Adam said to Eve, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, there, there's no mention of blood prior to the fall. Okay. Um, yet, the genealogy in Luke goes all the way back to Adam. And so you have to ask yourself, really, you know, when, when people say, well, Jesus was a Jew. Yes, I understand that. He was a Jew because his mother was Jewish. Okay, he came from the line of Judah. I get that. But to sit there and say that he is 100% Jewish, does that mean you're putting a race, racial, ethnic on God? Because after all, God is not Jewish. God is God, <laughs> you know, you know, God made the nations, all the nations. Osef is the son of, you know, so and so, and then and Luke. It kind of seems like it contradicts Matthew's genealogy, but it really doesn't because he, it says that, you know, Jesus began to be about thirty years old, and was supposed and was the supposed son of Joseph which was the son of Eli. We're going to get into that and kind of go and kind of explain that. And we're going to see that the genealogy mentioned in Luke is, is actually the one that really determines Jesus as the Messiah. Because again, Matthew just starts with Abraham. The one difference is, is Luke's starts and goes backward all the way to Adam. So you can uh, learn about these genealogies in the book in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. Now the difference between the Gospel of Matthew, the genealogy given in there, and the genealogy given in the Gospel of Luke, number one is in Matthew, it points from Abraham, only Abraham, and then it points forward. In the Gospel of Luke, you will notice that it points from Eli backwards. There's also a nice little in interesting twist in Luke's genealogy, which I will get into that in a minute. It's, it's basically based on the matter of reading the text very carefully to really see what's going on here. Okay, especially when we get down to the end of the genealogy in Matthew, you're going to see that Joseph. Okay, <clears throat> and continuing with the whole genealogy um, scenario, uh, I stated in my previous video, Avoiding Genealogies, that the only genealogy that really we need to be concerned about is the genealogy that points to the Messiah, okay? And you can...